TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. After 40 days of relative quiet, Palestinian Islamists launched a rocket from the Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities. Israeli Defense Minister Naftali Bennett emphasizes Jerusalem's resolve to force the Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guards out of Israel's northern neighbor Syria amid corroborated reports of an Iranian military scaleback. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad voices alarm over his country's capacity to battle a potentially devastating coronavirus outbreak. Palestinian Islamists launched a rocket from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities last night, the first such incident after 40 days of relative quiet. The incoming projectile activated a rocket alert system of the IDF's Home Front Command. Thankfully, the rocket exploded in an uninhabited area, causing no injuries or damage. The IDF spokesperson's unit told TV7 that in a retaliatory response to the indiscriminate rocket fire directed toward Israel's civilian communities, an IDF tank targeted three Hamas military posts in the northern Gaza Strip. While the intended targets were reportedly destroyed, including a Hamas restraining installation in an eastern neighborhood of Bet Hanun that is situated in the northern part of the jihadist-plagued enclave, no casualties were reported. Turning now to Jerusalem, where Premier Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud and Parliament Speaker Benny Gantz's Blue and White parties have revised a number of clauses in their previously signed coalition agreement in light of criticism leveled vis-à-vis -vis its constitutional legality during a High Court of Justice hearing earlier this week. Furthermore, members of the prospective national emergency government are in the process of pushing through a number of laws in Parliament, or Knesset in Hebrew, as part of a last-minute bid to accommodate the legal requirements for several problematic clauses of the coalition agreement, particularly in all that pertains to the alternating premiership arrangement between Netanyahu and Gantz. Consequently, Israeli Attorney General Avichai Mendelblit amended his formal response to the High Court of Justice, in which he underscored that he currently saw no justified legal grounds for the court to disqualify either the coalition agreement in its entirety or any of its individual clauses. The High Court of Justice is expected to issue its final ruling on the matter, including Netanyahu's eligibility to serve as Prime Minister despite being under criminal indictment at an unspecified time tomorrow. Turning now to the Israeli Defense Ministry's headquarters in the central city of Tel Aviv, where Defense Minister Naftali Bennett emphasized Jerusalem's resolve to force the Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guards out of Israel's northern neighbor Syria. In a regional security briefing with a select number of journalists, the top Israeli defense official emphasized that so long as Iranian forces are deployed on Syrian soil, they are putting themselves at risk. אנחנו הרבה יותר נחושים וחיילים איראנים שבאים לאדמת סוריה ופועלים באדמת סוריה דמם בראשם הם מסכנים את חייהם, משלמים בחייהם וימשיכו ביתר סט אנחנו לא נוותר ולא נאפשר הקמת בסיס איראני קדמי בסוריה the comments by the Israeli Defense Minister came after repeated attacks against Iranian-controlled installations in Syria were registered over the course of the past two weeks. According to a number of those reports, at least 14 Iranian troops and Iraqi militants were killed in yesterday's attack alone, when the Israeli Air Force allegedly targeted a so-called Scientific Research Institute, which intelligence officials refer to as Branch 247. TV7 has managed to corroborate that the targeted installation in question was being used by Iran and its proxies as a factory to upgrade statistical missiles into precision-guided weaponry. Separately, a senior Israeli defense official revealed on condition of anonymity 
that for the first time since Iran first entered Syria, it is now reducing its troop numbers and is evacuating a number of its bases. The official further noted that the Islamic Republic of Iran has gone from being an asset to a liability for Syria, while asserting further that Syria has been paying a rising price for the Iranian presence in its territory for a war that isn't its own. The Israeli defense official further reiterated statements that were previously made by Defense Minister Naftali Bennett, which highlights Jerusalem's intention to ramp up the pressure on Iran until its departure from Syria. Meanwhile in Damascus, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad voiced alarm over his country's capacity to battle a potentially devastating coronavirus outbreak. Speaking at a committee overseeing measures to curb the corona contagion spread, Assad warned that a sudden spike could result in a real catastrophe. وتواضع الأرقام لا يعني أبدا بأن هذه الأرقام المحدودة لا تنفجر فجأة خلال أيام وربما أسابيع قليلة لنرى أن أنفسنا أمام كارثة حقيقية تتجاوز الإمكانيات الصحية واللوجستية في سوريا. The Assad regime imposed a general curfew on territories under its control over a month ago after announcing its first officially confirmed coronavirus case. It's important to mention, however, that medical sources in Syria accused Damascus authorities of orchestrating a cover-up of the real situation across the war-torn country. These allegations were repeatedly rejected by regime officials. Separately, in the northern Turkish-controlled parts of Syria, Ankara authorities have erected a quarantine center for Syrian expatriates who return to their home country from Turkey amid the latter's efforts to contain the contagion spread, since more than 129,000 coronavirus cases have been officially confirmed. The center is designed to Syrian أكيد بعد فترة الحجر اللي حقضيها هون حطلع ومارس حياتي الطبيعية وحتى حيكون هذا الأمر دافع ثقة للأشخاص اللي أنا بعرفهم اللي حتعامل معهم حاليا من داخل سوريا. While authorities stressed the importance of health verification of persons in transit, the manager of the Syrian quarantine center noted that the rising number of Syrians returning from Turkey is putting a strain on their already stretched resources. بعد انتشار مرض كورونا في دول العالم وخاصة في دول الجوار تم إنشاء مركز الحجر الصحي الاحترازي في منطقة ريف جس الشغور يتم فيه استقبال أهل الوافدين وبعد وذلك بعد التنسيق مع الجانب التركي عبر المعابر الرسمية ينقل الوافدون بسيارات خاصة إلى المركز ويبقى الوافد في المركز طيلة فترة الحجر النظامية وهي 14 يوما إلى أن يتم التأكد من سلامة الوافد وبعدها يذهب كل وافد إلى منزله أو قريته. It is important to highlight that early this morning, the United Nations dispatched 52 truckloads of humanitarian aid to Syria's northwestern Idlib region, which is under the control of the Al Qaeda-linked Tahrir al-Sham terror group. The trucks enter the jihadist-controlled territory through the Chilvegozu border gate in Turkey's southern Hatay province, which borders Idlib governance. According to the UN, the supplies are earmarked for the residents of Idlib city and nearby rural areas. Turning now to Yemen, where the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels, which control the northern part of the war-torn country, announced the first confirmed case of the corona contagion, after a Somali migrant was found dead in his hotel room. Today, <laughs> 2020 وعلى الفور تحركت فرق التقصي الوبائي إلى الفندق حيث كان المصاب متوفي وتم أخذ عينة منه للفحص المخبري وقد أظهرت نتيجة الفحص المخبري أنه كان مصاب بفيروس كورونا المستجد المستجد وكانت حالة مؤكدة بفيروس كورونا
It is important to explain that Yemen is the poorest country in the Arabian Peninsula. And while it is considered one of the major hotspots of transit for both migrants and jihadists, it was one of the last countries to declare corona infections on April the 10th. Yemen has now reported 21 cases, including three deaths, in territory held by the internationally recognized government, and one case a death in areas under the Iran-aligned Houthis. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's Global Prayer Initiative, I would like to encourage you to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to pray today for the peace and salvation of Ukraine, alongside our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace and salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion worldwide. Furthermore, I would like to seize this opportunity to really thank all of our partners as your continued financial support as well as your prayers are the reason we're able to continue with our productions here at TV7 Israel News. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have an Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.